With the recent closure of the Nintendo 3DS eShop, there's been an uptick in demand for the 3DS and 2DS consoles. Many people are starting to realize that they want to play some of the games that they grew up with again, especially now that they aren't so readily available. For me, homebrewing is not just about modifying a console to do a bunch of stuff it wasn't programmed to do, but also preserving the games that we grew up with even if the company that created them doesn't choose to anymore. The prices of these consoles are not getting any cheaper, but if you're in the US, one way to save some money is to buy a Japanese system. The only problem with this though is that the 3DS is region locked, meaning you won't be able to play any of your US games that you may have collected or install any of your favorite CIA backups. But thanks to the legends over at 3DS Hacks Guide, there is a solution for this. This is a Japanese Pokeball Edition 2DS XL that I recently switched over to US, and as you can see here, can play Pokemon Sun perfectly. And in this video, I'm going to show you how we can homebrew a Japanese 3DS and get it switched over to the US region or whatever region you prefer. Before we get started, I encourage you to go over to the 3DS Hacks Guide website and follow along there as well. This site will help you with any troubleshooting you may run into. This guide will be for the current 11.17 update on the new 2DS and new 3DS line of systems. And if anything changes, I will update down below in the pinned comment and description. The first thing we're going to need to do is connect to the Wi-Fi and update our system to 11.17. If your console's not yet connected to Wi-Fi, go ahead and follow along with me with the prompts on screen. And also, if you've bought a system that's still under parental controls, I'm going to link a video up above on how to get it unlocked. Now that our system's updated, let's go ahead and prepare our SD card. I like to use an 128 gigabyte SD card, so let's go ahead and plug it into our computer and get it formatted. Because of the size, I am using the GUID formatting tool to get it formatted to FAT32. Go ahead and power down your system, and then swap the SD cards out. This is going to create the necessary files that we need on the new SD card. Go ahead and power your system back on. It should give you a prompt that it's preparing the SD card to be used. And as long as that looks good, you can go ahead and power your system back off once again. Now it's time to download all the necessary files we're going to need to homebrew the system. Back on your computer, go ahead and create a designated folder for all of the files to be downloaded into. All right, it's time to start grabbing these files. And I'll have all of these linked in the description box down below. The first one we're gonna grab is boot nine strap. And you wanna grab this zip file right here. Next up is FBI, and you want to grab both the CIA and the 3DSX file. Next up is God Mode 9, and you want to make sure you download the zip with a really long name. The Homebrew Launcher is the other CIA file that we need to grab. FBI and Homebrew Launcher is all we're going to need for now, but we're going to install some other ones later on. Luma is the next important piece of the puzzle. Download the luma3ds.zip file. Next up is safe b9s installer.zip. Super Skater Hacks is the exploit that allows us to hack the 11.17 firmware on the 3DS. Download the zip file for that as well. And the last thing we need is the usm.bin file on the unsafe mode page. Download that. All right, now that we have all the files that we need, we can go ahead and go back into that homebrew folder we created earlier, organize the files a little bit so they're a little bit easier to extract, and then go ahead and start extracting all of those zip files individually. And once we're done with that, we can go ahead and just delete all the zip files since we now have the folders. Power down your 3DS and go ahead and take the SD card out and put it in your computer. We're going to be creating a few new folders on the root directory of our SD card. The first one, we're going to name 3DS. From our homebrew folder, drag the fbi.3dsx file into the new 3DS folder we just created. Next, drop the usm.bin file right on the root of the SD card. Create a new file on your SD card and name it CIAs. Drag the two CIA files from our homebrew folder into this CIA's folder. Next, on the root of your SD card, we're going to create another new folder and name it boot9strap, all lowercase. Open up the boot9strap folder in our homebrew folder and drop the two files inside of it into our new boot9strap folder on our SD card. Create another new folder on our SD card and name it Luma. 
Inside that Luma folder, create another new folder and name it payloads, all lowercase. Back on our homebrew folder, go inside the godmode 9 folder. Grab the godmode9.firm file and drag it into the payloads folder. Go back to the root of your SD card. Grab the GM9 folder and drop it onto the root. Back in our homebrew folder, go into the Luma folder, grab these two boot files and drag them onto the root directory of the SD card. Alright, this next part is really important. Go inside the release new 3DS folder. Because we are modding a Japanese system, we want to focus our attention to the folder labeled Japan. Copy the contents of this folder to the root directory of your SD card. And if it asks to merge or replace files, just click yes. Back in the homebrew folder, go into the safe b9s installer folder. Copy safe b9s installer.bin to the root of your SD card. Alright, now that we have all the files that we need on our SD card, we can go ahead and take it out and put it back in our 3DS system. Turn your system on and make sure that it's set to whatever the current date is that you're performing this mod. This is important for the next step. Activate the camera by pressing the L and R shoulder buttons. Line your camera up with the QR code on the left and then tap the QR code icon, and then tap OK to launch the website. Before we click this link, we have to do a couple steps first. Press select, and then tap the star to create a bookmark of this page. Next, press start, and then scroll down to this little wrench here and select the settings. We need to delete all the browser cookies, so scroll down a little bit until you see the word cookie, tap on that, and then tap A. Now just press the home button and then relaunch the browser. All right, once the page reloads, it's time to tap that go, go button. You should get a notification like this, just press okay, and then you should see some funky colors, but that's a good thing. Shortly after, you should be booted straight into the homebrew launcher. Tap on the slot tool icon here and then shift your focus to the upper screen. Select install exploit to Wi-Fi slots and press A. Now before powering on your system, hold the left shoulder button, the right shoulder button, up on the D-pad, and the A button, then power on your system. This will launch your system into safe mode, and it's going to ask you if you want to update the system. Go ahead and just follow the prompts on screen. When you get to the Wi-Fi selection screen, tap connection 1. Tap the option on the top, and then scroll over one page and tap Proxy Settings. Then select the bottom icon. This will boot you into the Safe B9S installer. It will prompt you to enter a few inputs on the top screen. Once it finishes, you should get a screen that says Sig Hacks Firm Installed. Press A to boot into the Luma menu. From here, all you need to do is press Start and it will reboot your system. Go ahead and open up Download Play. And in Download Play, hold the left shoulder button down on the D-pad and the Select button, and this will boot you into the Rosalina menu. Scroll down to Miscellaneous Options and select Switch HB Title to the current app. Press B a few times to get back to Download Play. And now press the Home button and close out of it. Once it's closed, relaunch Download Play. This will now launch you back into the Homebrew Launcher. Tap on the Slot Tool icon. Select Restore Original Wi-Fi Slots. Go ahead and power down your system. And then before powering it back up, hold the select button. As long as your system boots into the Luma menu, you're good to go and you can press start. Go ahead and shut your system down once again. Then we can power it right back on. Once it boots back up, go ahead and launch download play. Once in Download Play, hold the left shoulder down on the D-pad and press Select to open up the Rosalina menu. Scroll down to Miscellaneous Options and select Switch the HB title to the current app. Press B to go back to Download Play and then close out of it with the Home button. When you relaunch Download Play this time, you should be booted into the Homebrew Launcher. Open the Rosalina menu by holding the left trigger button down on the D-pad and pressing Select. Scroll down and select Miscellaneous Options. From there, scroll down and select Dump DSP Firmware. 
Back in the miscellaneous options menu, scroll up once and select nullify user time offset. Now press B multiple times to get back to the homebrew launcher menu. Tap the FBI icon. Select SD and then scroll down to CIAs. Open that up and then select current directory. Scroll down and select install and delete all CIAs. Once that's finished, you can close out of the homebrew launcher. You're going to have a couple new applications on your home screen. Go ahead and open those up. It should be FBI and the homebrew launcher. All right, it's time to power your system back down and then boot it back into God Mode 9. To do this, hold the start button and then press the power button. And if it asks you to create an essentials files backup, go ahead and press A. You can also use the volume slider to make the screen brighter. Press the home button to pull up the menu. Scroll down to where it says scripts and select it. Select G9 Megascript. Then scroll down to where it says scripts from Playlix guide and select that. Then select this first option here that says set up Luma 3DS to CTR NAND. Press A to continue. Press A to unlock your SysNAND by entering the key combination. When you get back to this menu, just scroll down once and select clean up SD card. Then press the A button to continue. Press B to get back to this menu. Then select backup options. Select SysNAND backup. This is gonna make a backup of your system NAND to the SD card. Press A to continue. This can take around seven to 10 minutes, so just sit back and let it do its thing. Once it's finished, you can press B to get back to this menu. Press B one more time and then it'll ask you to relock your SysNAND. All right, we're up on the top screen now. Scroll down to where it says S SysNAND Virtual and select it. Scroll down to essential.exefs and select it. On the bottom screen, you're gonna to wanna to scroll down and select copy to GM9 out. And if it says destination already exists, just overwrite files. Press the A button to continue. When you get back to the screen, press the home button and select power off system. Time to stick our SD card back in the computer for one last time. Create a new folder to store the 2DS or 3DS backups in. Back on the SD card, open the GM9 folder. Open the out folder, and within the out folder, copy all of its contents into the new backup folder that we just created. You can now delete the two files with the longer name off of the SD card in the out folder. Next, we'll need to download the necessary files to get the system transferred over to the US region. I encourage you to go read the page that 3DS Hacks Guide has on region changing. It will tell you all the possible cons of changing the region of your system. None of these are really an issue to me. I've probably changed the region of 20 to 50 DSs. I honestly lost count, but this is good information that you should know before moving forward. Scroll down and you're gonna wanna select the link that says new 3DS 2DS USA. Go ahead and save it to that homebrew folder that we already had created, and once it downloads, unzip it. And the last thing that we need to download is the Aesthetics 3DS Starter Pack. Download the zip file and save it to that homebrew folder again. And once it downloads, go ahead and unzip it and delete the zip file. And these are the two folders we're gonna be focusing on right now, the 3DS Starter Pack and the CTR Transfer. Open the CDR transfer folder. There will be two files inside of that. Drag those to the root of your SD card. Next, we need to go back into the 3DS starter pack folder. Grab all of its contents and drag them to the root of your SD card. When asked, merge and replace all folders and files. All right, guys, you done real good if you made it this far. We are on the home stretch. So go ahead and take your SD card and put it back in your 2DS or 3DS system. Hold the start button and press the power button to boot into God Mode 9. From here on the top screen, select the first option, SD card no label. Scroll down to the first CTR transfer image file. It's the one gigabyte one and select it. Select transfer image to CTR NAND. Press A and then do the combo key to unlock the SysNAND. 
All right, this is it. This is the total recall moment. Your 3DS is being wiped of its previous self, and when it awakens, it will now be a US citizen. Press A to continue, and then press start to reboot the system. Once it boots back up, we just want to hop into the system settings now that we can read them and run a system update. And congrats, you should now be on a US 11.17 firmware system. Now, the last thing we need to do is I like to go to the language and make sure that it's set to English. Sometimes when you install games, they'll still be in Japanese for some reason, but I found that if you just change the language to English manually in the settings, it fixes that problem. Now we just need to open the homebrew launcher and install those CIAs. So thank you guys for watching. I hope this video was helpful for you getting your Japanese system modded and switched over to US or whatever region that you're trying to switch it over to. There is so much more that you can do with the 2DS and 3DS system. Honestly, this just is the basics. This is just like starting off with homebrew. There is so much more to do. I'll link a video right here on screen of one of my favorite apps you can use, which is called HShop. Don't forget to help me out by leaving a like on the video and subscribing to the channel. And I'll see you guys in the next one.